morning and welcome back to PSA TV. I'm Avalon Williams. We have on the phone with us this morning, Mr. Fali Augustine. Fali, good morning. Hi, good morning, uh, Ms. Williams. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. How are you this morning? I'm doing quite well this morning. Not bad at all. Yeah. Fali, I know you had a grand appearance there over the Mandalena on Sunday. Can you briefly describe the energy and mood uh, at the crowd and, you know, your overall impression of the launch of the PDP? Well, the, the, the PDP um, was doing what should have been really a soft launch um, in preparation for a very long election season for Tobago. Because you may not be aware, but we will have not just um, a general election that is scheduled for perhaps the last quarter of 2020, but perhaps as early as January in 2021, we will also have teacher elections. So when Tobago enters election mode, we won't be out for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not until the teacher election has um, transpired. And so we did what we thought would have been a soft launch on Sunday that turned out to be a massive hard launch. Mm -hmm. uh, we we saw the the ballroom at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort um, full to capacity with folks standing um, on the periphery of the ballroom. And then we had about the same amount of people standing on the outside looking at the monitors from the outside. The energy levels were extremely high. People were exuberant. Uh, for the first time in a long time, we saw Tobagonians who, Tobagonians as not being afraid to challenge the status quo, not afraid of victimization, and willing to show their face in public for a political organization other than the status quo. And I think that is a good sign of what we can expect in the upcoming election cycle in Tobago. Fali, how would you compare the PDP, the PDP of today with the party four years ago? What changes have you observed in the structure of the party, though? Well, I mean, four years ago, the, the party um, was barely being birthed because this all started when Mr. Duke made a run as an independent candidate in the 2015 elections. He did not win the election. However, um, he regained his deposit which is a first for Tobago, the first person to run as an independent in the national elections for a Tobago constituency and to get back the deposit. That would have been Mr. Duke in 2015. Uh, after that independent run, Mr. Duke started trying to um, assemble a group of, of young people. Um, in fact, as he will put it, political virgins, because he wanted folks who had never offered themselves for politics before mm -hmm. to, to run for the upcoming THA elections, which would have been in 2017. So between 2015, 2016, he was really trying hard. And, and he did explain even in his presentation on Sunday that folks like myself um, gave quite a bit of trouble before deciding to actually jump into the politics. Um, he was courting me for a while calling for a while, mm -hmm. trying to persuade me for a very long while to get involved in the politics. Um, and I resisted the call for a very long while. Mm -hmm. It was practically the last minute in October of 2017 that I joined um, the, the, the party and, and offered myself for elections. So in 2017, we moved from having one man as an independent to having a slate of 12 people uh, to contest the THA elections under the banner PDP. And um, between 2017 and now, we have been working on things like a constitution, a proper party structure. And so we have been a work in progress. And so on November 24th, we will be assembling again, this time in Tobago East mm -hmm. at Bell Garden, where we will meet and vote for um, an executive and will also ratify the party's constitution. 
we have been insisting on structuring the party well taking our time to get to this place and not rushing it unnecessarily and and ensuring that we do so we, we operate in a very transparent manner and ensuring that all our members have a say um and even in the formation of our constitution we would have gone as far as to gi have given we have given drafts to to several individuals to give us private comments on it we have passed it through lawyers we have passed it through the general membership and and so we believe we are in a good place to ratify the constitution to elect an executive um, committee and that committee will then take over the management of the party and take us into the upcoming elections um, it should be noted that to date um, the, ma the majority of the, the management functions of the party are being done, or were being done rather, by the Teachy Assembly Caucus, as in the members of the party that are sitting in the House of Assembly. And that will be Mr. Duke, Dr. Faith B. Israel, and myself. Mm -hmm. We would have tried to manage this process up to this point along with the former candidates and that's and that's another important point to note that the candidates that weren't successful in the last THA elections they have not just fallen by the wayside what they have done is that they have spent quality time with us in in planning and strategizing and helping to take the party to its next um, step um, in growth, which is getting the constitution ratified, electing an executive and preparations for the upcoming national and teacher elections. Mm -hmm. Fali, do you think this group of candidates will be able to present a more effective challenge to the PNM than four years ago? Well, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we also have clear in our minds is that we will have to change some candidates and some candidates know to themselves that they may not be a best fit for their electoral districts that they may not be the most winnable candidates for their areas mm -hmm. and and so they are staying on and working with us not because they think or know to themselves that they that is a must that they will be selected as candidates. Mm -hmm. But they are doing this because they want to see the party progress and that we have the best possible candidates. And let me take the opportunity to throw out a challenge to, to Mogonians far and wide, especially our young, educated Togonians and, and our political virgins, those who have never offered themselves for office, for public office, that you should consider offering yourself and the opportunity will come very soon. We will make a call for candidates. And folks can just offer themselves to be nominated. And we'll see how that process goes. And hopefully, we will attract the best possible candidates that will take to be go forward. Mm -hmm. What are some of the changes, if any, that can be made to the THA Act to strengthen the office of the minority leader? All right. Well, the... The THA Act, as it is now structured, uh, is is really um, how to put it kindly, is is really just um, an attempt to pacify Tobagonians. It doesn't in any way, any real way, give the THA the ability to really govern the island of Tobago. Mm -hmm. And let me give you a, a simple example. The THA. Um, more than 10 years ago, wanted to create a marine park in Speyside, where I live. The THA does not have the authority to create a marine park. Mm -hmm. Now, in Speyside, where I live, I, I can just walk outside and look at, at, at the, the, the ocean and look at the reef changed um, marine life that we have here. And we have what, the largest brink coral in the Western Hemisphere. We have several reef gardens that are, of course, all threatened by um, the impact of climate changes and, and so on. And to create a marine park in the area, we saw as, as something very critical 
for safeguarding the, the marine environment that we have in space side, which is critical for tourism and for the, the local economy. Mm-hmm. But the THA doesn't have the legal authority to do that. And so the THA, through what the, the THA act that we now ha- have, the THA had to more or less send a request down to Trinidad to the Prime Minister and the Cabinet, which was Patrick Manning at the time, and said, look, we need a marine park created in space side. And then the Cabinet had to then decide whether or not it will grant that request by going to Parliament with what we call a THA bill. Guess what? Something as simple as that never happened. Patrick Manning died, God rest his soul, mm-hmm. and it still hasn't happened. And so uh, there are a lot of very simple, simple things like that that just cannot get done because the teacher does not have the authority in law to do it. And it stymies the, the development of the island, the economy of the island. It stymies our source for protecting the environment, the natural environment in Tobago. And, and there are simple things we just can't get done. We, we talk about a marina, we talk about development of the port, commercial shipping port. All of these things the THA is willing and ready to do, but the THA simply cannot do it because we do not have full authority in the law to do most of these things. Mm-hmm. And so what we're saying is we need to improve on the THA Act, we need to fix it so as to allow the THA the legal way to accomplish um, what is necessary for the island of Tobago. Because the reality is the central government focuses most, if not all, of its attention on Trinidad and what happens there, especially when it comes to its legislative framework. And Tobago-centric legislation gets marginalized by the mere fact that Tobago is an island with just 60,000 people, they're small, we have bigger priorities than that. But for us in Tobago, the things we need, like marine parks and so on, are priorities um, which are necessary for the development of the island and for the sustenance of our economy. Mm -hmm. Fali, I know I've been um, liaising with a lot of Tobagonians recently, also in particular with the hurricane that hit Tobago hard, the hardest. And, you know, I've Tobagonians are asking for change. Uh, they, they said that they felt a bit forgotten by our Prime Minister. How would you describe the leadership of Dr. Keith Rowley? Well, many Tobagonians are disappointed in the leadership of, of Dr. Rowley. Many Tobagonians are disappointed. And if you know Tobagonians well, you know Tobagonians tend to, to be very... Um, as I say, we, we, we tend to be very loyal mm-hmm. to our clan, to our group that we call to be. We tend to be very nationalistic. Right? We tend to be very nationalistic. That's the correct term. And in being nationalistic, we tend to really stand up for the rights and the values of, 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 of Tobago. And many Tobagoans feel that Dr. Rowley has disappointed us in that regard. He has not stood for the things that Tobago value. Um, he has not always stood for to be good old traditional Tobago morals. He has not always represented us well. And we just spoke about the THA Act and having that rectified. Mm-hmm. And we feel that he being a Tobagonian he should have been best poised to really advocate for those change, changes on our behalf. And that has not happened. It really hasn't happened. And so many of us are disappointed in his inability to do those things. And we also feel like Dr. Rowley, uh, Dr. Rowley is controlled, controlled by the real powers within his party. And the sad thing about the PNM is that the, the, the PNM is controlled by its party financiers, which tend to be the one percenters who um, already controls the, the vast majority of the economy of the country. Mm-hmm. And so we do not have proper wealth distribution. 
we do not have a situation whereby uh, the, the needs of the, the larger community of Trinidad and Tobago are met. And, and I don't think it's just, this, just to, it's just to Burgoyans. Mm -hmm. If you ask people who live in rural parts of Trinidad, they too are disappointed. Yeah. If you ask people who live south of the Caroni Bridge, they too are disappointed. If you ask people east of the lighthouse in Port of Spain, they too are disappointed. And so it might just be uh, the, the few people in, in the urban centers of Trinidad and west of Trinidad that are really happy with, with Dr. Rowley's stewardship. Mm -hmm. And that's because their needs are advanced more than anybody else in the entire country, and which, is, which is unfortunate. And, and it's something that we need to look at closely because it may not just be a Dr. Rowley issue, but it may be an issue of how governance has been done across the island of Trinidad and Tobago for quite a while. That, you know, we, we forget and marginalize the vast majority of, of the country and, and, and really support and uphold uh, a, a very few. And let me give you a classic example. Mm -hmm. people, people are always willing to don't cry those who are in CPEP and URP. And always quick to say, well, you're depending on the government too much. Too much dependency syndrome. But you know who are the biggest dependents on the government of Trinidad and Tobago? Those big contractors, those contractors who live off of government contracts, they eat the majority of the food. You talk about eat a food, nyam, mm -hmm. nama food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those big businesses are really those that have been creaming off most of the resources of the country and benefiting the most. And we have to have a serious conversation about wealth distribution. And one of the good things that you know the unions are doing, like PSA with PSA TV, yeah. is that we are not having this discussion about wealth distribution. When we look around the country, we have young professionals by majority who can't afford homes. The, the average person in, in Trinidad and Tobago who is, who is supposed to be a part of the middle class can no longer afford to purchase a home. That's the reality of our existence. And that is sad. It is sad. And, and it, it means that, that we have effectively erased our middle class. We have pushed our upper classes much higher. And the vast majority of us are struggling somewhere in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that cannot be a recipe for a successful country. And that is a recipe for, for Venezuela. And we don't want to make Trinidad and Tobago Venezuela um, what, what, what Venezuela now is. And so we have to begin to have a real conversation about wealth distribution. We have to get back to our social democracy moorings. Because if it is... We have countries in Europe, like the Finlands and the Norways and the Swedens and the Switzerlands and so on, who have social democracies that are doing well, that results in high-quality education, high-quality homes at home and access to public um, homes for their citizens and so on, good health care, and so they don't need to go to a and &E and waste or we are in a and &E and can't get good service and machines breaking down every monday morning mm -hmm. and good road infrastructure good public transport and so on we are not having these discussions in trinidad and tobago and i cannot understand how we got to this place how do we move from a place where the ideal was education for all high quality health care good public transportation good um, road infrastructure and so on to a place where none of those things matter and the only thing that matters are those who are rich and famous and the vast majority of us must scrape at the bottom of the barrel we just simply have to have a more forceful discussion about wealth distribution and force some changes up at the top we really do need that kind of revolution thank you so much Fale, i just want to ask you one last question how would you describe mr duke's performance as minority leader over the four, past four years well, we have, we have never had a minority leader quite like Mr. Watson Duke, mm -hmm. to be honest. 
And so Mr. Watson Duke is in a league of his own. You know, there's this popular dancehall song now about being, being in your own lane. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duke is in his own lane, literally. Mr. Duke has introduced to the, the politics of Tobago what I like to call protest politics. Now, while Mr. Duke is not the first union leader in politics in Tobago, because a P.T. James, um, which was our second major political leader from Tobago, mm -hmm. and a P.T. James came just before A.N.R. Robinson, he was a union leader too, you know? But Mr. Duke has introduced to Tobago politics what I call protest politics, mm -hmm. which is about strong advocacy, which is about standing up for the rights of of citizens, which is about advocating on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves, which is about adding creativity to the mix. When you think of the swim protest, that is creativity at its highest. Mm -hmm. That is advocacy unlike any other thing we have seen in the history of, of modern politics on the island of Tobago. Um, Mr. Duke has also been very forceful, very vocal, very unafraid unbashful and and so it's a breath of fresh air it is something new it it has taken some tobagonians a little while to get used to because it was scary at first for them mm -hmm. but tobagonians are now waking up and realizing uh, uh mr duke is genuine he's for real this is this is um the direction we need to go in we cannot allow the people's national movement to keep this, these ropes around our necks. Mm -hmm. We cannot stay in bondage. We have to fight our way out. And, 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 and the reality of our existence in Tobago is Tobago cannot rise with the PNM remaining there. We have had the, the people's national movement there for uh, close to 20 years. By the time they are done, it will be almost 21 years with them in constant power and that is that is not healthy for our democracy and we thank god for the day that mr duke decided that he will stand up he will rise up and he will challenge the status quo so that we can have a return to a healthy democracy on the island of tobago thank you so much Fali. i want to ask you for your closing comments this morning you know i just want to use your platform to say to all of trinidad and tobago mm -hmm that there is no power greater than people power. There is the power of money. There is the power of guns and arms and ammunition. There is the power of, 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 of people who are wealthy. There is political power. But there is really no power on earth greater than people power. And you know, we usually say the voice of the people is the voice of God. And I, I believe that too. I believe that. And, that. and that's because when people stand up, they can achieve so much more. And for a very long time, Trimigonians have just sat by and watched the country, our country, just dissipate into thin air before mm -hmm. our eyes we we have sat and we have just looked on as a few have benefited while the many have suffered and we can't have that this is the country that was at the forefront of of the pan-african black power movement this is a country that was at the, at the forefront of trade unionism in the world this is the country that have produced people from Kwame Ture to, to Makandal Daga and so on. And so we cannot get to a place where we just allow our people to suffer. Black Stalin said it best, sufferers don't care about race, sufferers don't care about who from tongue and who from country. Sufferers just care about where the next food coming from. Mm -hmm. And as a country, we need to band together and we need to fight for our country. And this is a fight against classism, against elitism. This is a fight for better wealth distribution. This is a fight for our children. This is a fight for things like high quality education, good health care, 
good public road infrastructure, good public transportation and integrated transportation. This is a fight for for our own souls as a nation, as as a people. We have to fight for our own souls. We have lost our way somewhere along the line, and we need to regain the spirit of this country, and we need to fight on because. Trinidad and Tobago, given its resources, should easily be the mecca of the West Indies, mm -hmm. and we are not. We should easily be a great power, a great force to be reckoned with, and we are not. And so we have a lot of work to do. There's no need to give up now, no need to throw our hands in the air, but there's a need for us to fight on. And we are all in this together. Those of us here on the island of Tobago, those of you in Trinidad, we are in this fight together. So let's fight on. Let's fight on and let's fight hard. And hopefully we will get there sometime soon. Thank you so much, Fali. All right, you're welcome. All right, take care. Bye-bye. That was Assemblyman Mr. Fali Augustine there chatting with us a bit about the launch of the PDP. So, you know, he's saying there that there's a need to fight and to keep fighting. So we're going to take a short break and we will be joined by former Mayor Mr. Louis Lee Singh at 8 a.m. this morning here in studio. So you can also send in your comments and you will be, our phone lines will be open for phone calls so he can answer as well here, right here in studio. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Try to push you over 